We will be beginning the program in one moment. If everyone could please find their seats. If I could please have everyone's attention. I'd like to welcome the Springfield International Charter School Board of Trustees and staff.
seniors, please remain standing. I'd ask that all in attendance please rise. Student speakers, vocalists, and musical talent in Robert Scoville, please come up to the stage. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone's having a good day. I hope you guys are all having a great night. My name is Robert Scoville, and I will be leading you guys in the Pledge of Allegiance. So all of those who would like to participate, please join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and invisible and liberty and justice for all. Thank you guys, have a great night. I'd ask that you remain standing for our national anthem. Great job, Makita. Thank you. You may be seated. Good evening. I would like to welcome the Springfield International Charter School Board of Trustees, honored guests, SICS faculty, class of 2023. 20, <laughs> we'll get that right. And of course, their families. What a wonderful evening we have ahead of us as we recognize the accomplishments of our Springfield International Charter School Class of 2023.
It is amazing what each of you has done under circumstances which you did not ask for, but you met each challenge head on, and here we sit today. Certainly, each of you has worked so hard in this journey. This journey has taken you down many familiar and unfamiliar paths. It is an end in one way and a beginning in another. Take advantage of the future you have ahead as from my view, it is bright for all of you. Two important people that have been imperative in your journey to get to this day couldn't be with us here today. They both send their congratulations and well wishes. Of course, I speak of Mr. Brendan Dwyer and Mr. Tom Capania, TC. They have both guided and assisted you in all of your trials, tribulations, as well as your successes in positive moments. As this is being live streamed, and I'm sure they are watching, I would like us all to give a huge round of applause in recognition for all they have done to get us here today. Thank you, Mr. Dwyer and Mr. Capania. You are missed. And of course, I can't end this welcome without recognizing our wonderful and supportive families. This has been a 13-year journey that concludes today. Your strength, perseverance, and devotion to your children have made all the difference in all of their lives. We can't thank you enough for what you have done. Let's give a huge round of applause for our families. Yes. Class of 2023, what a year you had. Thank you for the laughs, the tears, and the memories that you have given us all. Come back and see us someday. Congratulations, class of 2023. There's something special about all of you you will forever be in our thoughts and our hearts. Thank you so much. Of course, today is about the Springfield International Charter School Class of 2023, and this is their day. Another great tradition we have at SICS is hearing remarks from, from a few of our students from the Class of 2023 as chosen by our faculty advisors. Our first student, Amory Krautler. Good evening to friends and family, staff, and the class of 2023. It feels so surreal to stand up here reading off a speech for my high school graduation. I've never thought of myself as an achiever, but over the eight years I've been here, I guess I have learned to become one. I've learned that becoming an overcomer far exceeds what I learned in the classroom. In fact, in many instances, what I have learned to apply in the real world is why I think of myself as an achiever. They say that adversity can make us learn and grow as individuals. What I learned was why not me? I had a choice to make. Do I sit around and mope about the adversity I've had to face? Or do I ask myself, why can't I be the one who gets the prize? During my freshman year, I lost my dad to an unfortunate disease. The pandemic was racing across the country, schools were closed, and I was losing a hold on my identity as a thriving high school honor student. I thought I had hit rock bottom, and I can remember asking myself, why me? During the week I lost my father, teachers who I didn't even know knew my father reached out to me saying how sorry they were for my loss. Coming back to school, I was very supported by all the staff, Ms. Archie, Mrs. Delapena, Mr. Ross, and Mr. Garcia. I just wanted to give you guys recognition for getting me through one of my hardest years. I would have never made it through my freshman year without you guys. Countless tests, papers, and a number of projects do not really define how I will apply all I have learned in school into my real world experiences. To the class of 2023, we made it finally. What can we do as a class getting into the big bad world? 
First, we can find support people. What I learned was to ask myself, why not me? When I think I'm going to fail, I do. And when I think I'm going to be successful, I am. And so the question is, what can I share with you tonight that you might use in your own life? The answer is simple. Ask yourself repeatedly, why not me? My biggest motivator through all of this is being a first generation college student. I can envision myself as a college graduate. Why not me? There really is no reason. Why not you? Envision it and go get it. The only thing that can stop you from achieving your dreams is yourself. I have learned many things thus far in life. Probably the one thing that sticks out the most is what is in my power. What is in my control? What can I do and what can I give? One of the things I can control are the people who have helped me along the way, and to those who have, I am forever grateful. How can I control other people's behaviors, you might be asking yourself? What I have learned is to show up, work hard, and earn the respect of those around me. At this time, I would like to thank five people who have mentored me throughout my life. To TC, for being my softball coach, to becoming my life coach. I know my father is thankful for everything you've ever done for me. I can see why he said you were his favorite teacher ever. Someone told me when you heard my father had passed, you knew it was your job to look over for me. Thank you for everything. I would like to thank my grandma for having the biggest impact in my life. You took me under your wing without second thought and have helped me achieve great things. You have certainly shaped me into the woman I am today. Thank you. Now, I didn't write these last two because these two people were reading my speech and I really wanted to surprise them. So the first one, Ms. De La Pena. When my father had passed, I really didn't have anyone and you were there for me. You went to all my teachers, you told them how great I was and how I would definitely make up the work that I had been behind on for weeks at that point. And you got me through my senior year. I had a tough one and I just wanna thank you for everything you've ever done. To my aunt, Miss Doyle, as some may know her, but Mrs. Sierra, because she got married this year into my family. I'm so glad you started working at school. <laughs> it has been the best thing ever. You have shaped me into a beautiful human, and I just want to thank you. And you're stuck with us now, so. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, to my mom. You're one of the strongest women I know. Your strength and perseverance has inspired me to keep going when all I wanted to do was give up. Thank you for always being someone to lean on and being there for me when I needed you the most. I can be a role model for others to look up to. I can believe anything is possible. I am just a girl coming from a low-income family going to one of the most prestigious schools in the country, the University of Southern California. Go Trojans! <laughs> so if I can, why not you? Our next speaker, some of you may know him, Kijor Gladden. Good evening and welcome to the class of 2023 graduation. My name is Kijor Gladden, and this is an honor to stand before each of you on graduation day and deliver my remarks from this special moment. For many years, I never thought anyone would allow me to address such an important audience like graduation ceremony for my family and friends of class of 2023. In fact, I never thought anyone would ever really be interested in what I had to say. My journey to get to this moment has been unique in many ways. I began my education here at SICS. However, I moved through four different schools where I felt out of place. 
I knew I needed to return, which I did midway through my junior year. Through the support of my grandmother and my mom, I finally found a home here at SICS, and I immediately knew I belonged. I was not always the easy, <laughs> it was not always easy, and I definitely was not always the most mature young person. <laughs> I had to learn early to ask for help. I learned to lean on my grandma. I learned to lean on my teammates on both football and basketball. For those who don't know, I was named captain of the first ever football team here at SICS. Uh, that taught me how to be a good role model and a That taught me how to be a good role model for the younger student athletes. I understood the connection between sports and life. I learned how to do it. I shared what I knew. I learned that I had a voice that desired to be heard here at SICS. I found there was an audience that was willing to listen. For my future, I have been accepted to several local colleges. However, I am happy to announce I will be attending college in Connecticut to become a barber. <laughs> Where I will learn a trade so I can earn a decent living and cut some heads along the way and help people. <laughs> God, my father, guys. <laughs> um, my work deck is ready for the challenge. And when I get my barber's license, it's free haircuts for the guys on the football team. <laughs> Thank you to all my teachers and administration for never giving up on me. Lastly, I cannot leave without thinking Ms. Delapena for always being on my behind and motivating me to finish strong. <laughs> Without you and grandma, none of this would be possible. Now, I will see you on our 10th year reunion. Love y'all. Our next student, Kiara Valentin. God bless, Dios te bendiga. For the past five years of my life, I've freely spent so much time at church, and because of that, I can't stand in front of a crowd and begin to speak without properly blessing those that are listening. Now for my formal introduction. Good evening, families, friends, teachers, administrators, Board of Education members, and most importantly, graduates. The day we so desperately wanted is finally here. Through the unpredict unpredictable difficulties that arose, we never thought this day would come. We prayed for its quick delivery, crossed days off our calendars, counted hours, minutes, and seconds, and now that it's here, I'm sorry it is because that means leaving teachers who have been my mentors and friends who inspire me. Growing up, my dad always said, time flies when you're having fun, and surely time has. As I stand here in front of you, I see 85 ambitious students who hold the future in their hands. As I look into this crowd, I see peers that I have grown up with. Peers that I remember learning simple multiplication with to giving each other confusing looks during Ms. Lee's AP Calculus class. <laughs> I see friends that made coming to school worth it with the laughter that we shared. As I look into this crowd, I see 85 unique students, all who have different backgrounds, goals, inspirations, and stories. And now as this chapter closes, a new one begins. If you told me that during my freshman year that I would later start a faith-based club when I was a junior, and that my fourth week of my senior year, I would leave for 10 days on my very first missionary trip, I would have not believed you at all. Although I did miss out on the first half of the awakening in AP literature, I received my own awakening in the streets of Ecuador. 
There is one memory that I will always cherish. It occurred during one of our daily church visits. At each church we attended, we handed gifts to the children. I will never get, forget when they called one little girl up to the front and they handed her a backpack with the hand of, with, handed her a backpack with the faces of Princess Anna and Elsa printed on it. The moment the little girl picked up the backpack, she smiled from ear to ear and left out a scream filled with joy. At this moment, I realized all the little things we take for granted in life. Something that we see so minor, other people cherish. Here at SICS, there are so many individuals who have motivated me through small acts that truly mean so much to me. Leaving Miss Lee's homeroom class each morning, she never failed to say, I hope you have a good day, Kiara. Mr. Walsh was always doing something silly in the hallways and making the day a bit brighter. And Mrs. Sierra went around the hallways from time to time, either playing the Encanto soundtrack or Lizzo, to wake us up on days senior-itis was really getting to us. The list, can go on, the list can go on and on, but as I look back at all the time that has passed, all the small things that occurred are reasons to be grateful for the individuals that tried so hard to make our high school experience a little more enjoyable. While I thank the individuals at SICS that have helped me along this journey, I can't look past all the people involved in my life outside of SICS that played an important role in helping me get to this moment. My ultimate inspiration comes from my best friends the amazing two individuals who made me the person I am today. My parents, David and Clarissa Valentin, never gave me an idea I could never do whatever I wanted to do. They filled our house with love, laughter, and memories. As they guided me through these 18 years of life, I don't know if they ever realized that the person I most wanted to be was them. I was born to two individuals who decided to serve this country instead of going to college. My parents sacrificed so much for me to go to college, and I can now say that I have been accepted into 13 colleges and universities, and I have... <laughs> and I have decided to attend the mini Ivy League of Trinity College, where I plan to major in film production. <laughs> to the class of 2023, no matter what obstacle were in your way or the different people that helped you along the way, all the little things we looked over made it possible for this great moment to take place. We dreamed of growing up, being like the seniors we saw during the senior walks when we were in elementary school. And it's so surreal that yesterday we took our final walk through those halls of SICS. In just a few moments, this chapter of our life will close and it was those small moments that we will cherish forever. Although we may not know what the future holds, my favorite line from the Disney movie Soul says, but I do know I'm going to live every minute of it. So whatever chapter you will begin next, remember to cherish every moment. Don't pray for it's time to pass, but live in the moment and enjoy the ups and downs. And while I have your attention, I would just like to take my be real from yesterday. So if you guys want to smile. <laughs> and once again, congratulations to the class of 2023. And our final speaker, Kendra Scott. Thank you. Good evening, friends, members of the Board of Trustees, Mayor Sarno, Director Justin Baker, family, faculty, and members of the Class of 2023. My name is Kendra Scott, and it is my honor to stand before you all and speak. I could stand here today and reflect on a countless number of SICS experiences. However, I've always felt that a high school speech should have a quote from someone wiser than me. I've searched around and offered this meaningful quote from Harvey Mackey. Time is free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. Once you've lost it, you can never get it back. Whenever I said I was in high school, Almost every person told me to enjoy my time because it goes by quickly. I used to get tired of hearing that because I felt like it was going so slowly. I don't feel that way now, standing here today giving you this speech. I was always told that there's a time for everything, that time can go by in a heartbeat and you find yourself reminiscing. In kindergarten, there's a time when my teacher, Mrs. Robinson, sat on the carpet and read my class books. Now, I sit in front of kindergartners today, reading to them in the same spot where I used to be. There was a time in second grade when I stumbled around on that yellow playscape in the back of the school. 
Now, I hold expert status on that playscape and watch kids play around like we once did. There was a time when we transitioned to middle school, looking at all the big kids upstairs, thinking that one day it would be us up there. Now, we look over the atrium balcony at the middle schoolers downstairs, remembering what it was like to be them. There was a time when we were faced with something we'd have never expected, a pandemic. Our freshman year was cut short. Our first taste of high school was no longer ours. Everything had changed. Now, we all can proudly say that we made it through those times of adversity. There was a time when our first day of senior year began. From the beginning, we began the countdown and anticipated this day. Now, finally, here we are. And soon enough, when we all leave here to celebrate with our families, there will be a time when we will look back on this moment. As I look out into this crowd, I see the faces of the people who helped me throughout my journey. I would like to take some time to highlight some of those people in my life. First, I would like to thank my sister and my best friend, Kyra. Kyra has stood by my side through every obstacle I've come across. She has helped me shape me into the woman I am today. She always motivates me to put my best foot forward. Ironically, Kyra and I are both graduating the same year. Kyra as a registered nurse at MCPHS Boston, and me with my high school diploma on my way to University of New Hampshire to major in veterinary science. Words cannot express how thankful I am for you and what you've taught me, Kyra. I love you so much. <laughs> Next, I wanna thank my mom and dad for pushing me to put my best foot forward in everything I do. Thank you for making sacrifices for me to be where I am today. I love you both tremendously and I'm so happy I can make you both proud. I also want to thank Ms. Della Pena for providing me with mental support during my rough patches. I love being able to come into your office and tell you about my day. Whenever I doubted myself, you helped me turn that doubt into confidence. I feel so fortunate to have gone through high school with your support. Thank you. <laughs> Unfortunately, who is not here today, I still would also like to thank my college counselor and softball coach TC who helped me build my character, become a better softball player, and help me pursue my academic goals here at SACS. Thank you for all your encouragement and support you offered me. And to the faculty, thank you. You all have helped me one way or another during my 13 years at the school. And lastly, I would like to thank our principal, who also is not here, Mr. Dwyer, for his support as a teacher, an AQC, and ultimately as our principal. We appreciate all your time and effort you put in through the years, and I express my gratitude to you. Congratulations, class of 2023. I can't say we made it to the end because this is not the end for us. It is just the beginning of a new journey, a journey that will have divergent paths for each of us to take, and a journey that I wish you all the best on. Thank you. I'd like to thank our student speakers again. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you. And you can rejoin your classmates now. Thank you. At our graduation rehearsal on Thursday, we handed out many awards and scholarships. Today we will be giving out the remainder of those awards and scholarships. Today presenting our faculty scholarship is Ms. Cindy Miller, Director of Special Education. Good evening graduates and guests. Each year, our SICS staff nominate a student who has made an impact in our community. This year's recipient has been an SICS student since elementary school. And if proof success is a process, not an event. It is my honor to present this year's SICS Staff Scholarship Award to Austin Lee.
Congratulations, Austin. Well deserved. Presenting our Parent Connection Scholarship is Ms. Shirley Vasquez, our Deputy Director. Good evening. I am grateful and excited to be here representing not only our school, but our wonderful Parent Connection. As an administrator and a parent, being a member of the Parent Connection has been very re rewarding and impactful for our community. This year's scholarship presentation holds a special place in our hearts as it was unanimously voted by the organization to be renamed the scholarship to the Brendan Dwyer Graduation Senior Scholarship. The Parent Connection is made up entirely of volunteer parents and guardians of current SICS students. Mr. Dwyer has continuously been an instrumental, has continuously been instrumental in shepherding our seniors to college and getting to know many of them in middle school to ease the transition into high school. We think that many would agree there is no better way to say thank you to Mr. Dwyer by honoring him in this way. Every dollar spent through this organization was raised or contributed by our SICS family. As parents and guardians, we understand that the allocation of scholarship funds is best decided by you and your family. That is why your funds are awarded to students. We thank each family that has ever participated or co continues to participate in our fundraising activities. We are SICS and your continued support makes it possible to give these cash scholarships. It is with a great number of good wishes that we present these three students with these well-deserved -deser awards. Kalani Ruiz. <laughs> Anne-Marie Krautler. And Vida Mirabel. All three excellent choices. Our final scholarship tonight is the Catherine Moki Memorial Scholarship. In presenting this scholarship is Mariah Moki. Hello, everyone, and congratulations. So my sister Catherine was a lot like many of you. She grew up at SICS. She had a tough skin and a loud mouth, and she was too smart for her own good. And that was what made Kate stand out. Um, she wanted to use those qualities to change the world. She did model Congress and was the founder of the Gay Straight Alliance at SICS. She was not one to keep quiet about the things that she cared about. Um, but unfortunately, in 2015, Catherine passed away due to breakup violence. And that year um, was really hard because she was a senior and missed out on all the things that seniors should get to do. So in her honor that year, my family created Celebrate Kate, which is the organization we carry her voice through um, the years and we raise money so that we can provide scholarships to students like you and give back to our community. Um, and we have some outstanding students here um, who embody the qualities, uh, the qualities of leadership that she did. 
So this year I'm honored to present two scholarships of $1,111.11 each to students whose voices showed clearly through their applications. And I know that these students have the ability to be dreamers, activists, and world changers. Congratulations to Gabrielle Bolio. And Shadel Shauna K. Armstrong. Thank you to our presenters and certainly our award winners. And now, a musical selection from our very talented SICS vocalists and musicians. Thank you, Grandma, for being the reason that I'm on this stage today. I love you. I can almost see it, that dream I'm dreaming, but there's a voice inside my head saying, you'll never reach it. Every step I'm taking, every move I make feels lost with no direction. My faith is shaking, but I, I gotta keep trying, gotta keep my head held high. It's always gonna be another mountain, I'm always gonna wanna make it move.
Wow, the amount of talent we have. Unbelievable. Nice job. I'd like to invite Dr. Atu White, Chairperson of our Board of Trustees, up as our first honored guest. To Mayor Sarno, to Representative, Representative Ramos, to Director Baker, and all of our platform participants, and to our dedicated and devoted high school principal, Mr. Brendan Dwyer, you are in our thoughts and prayers. I'm joined today by a few Board of Trustee members, Ms. Anne-Marie Nicolai, our Secretary, and Ms. Sandra Shaw, if we can give them a hand. As I considered the words this evening, I thought about these words, we are S-I-C-S, we keep trying. Our mission is clear to teach children to perform to the best of their ability to achieve academic excellence in a global context as we prepare graduates to attend colleges and universities. Our goal is to develop and strengthen the ethical, moral, and civic values, thus molding men and women with the knowledge, skills, and social judgment they will need to face the challenges of the times. The challenges of the times present in different forms, but we are S-I-C-S, we keep trying. Nikita Gill, in her book, Where Hope Comes From, penned these words. A reminder from smaller beings, she writes, quote, the bird building her home on your windowsill has had every nest destroyed before. The spider that is delicately weaving a silken masterpiece has had every single thread broken before. And despite it all, they try again." End of quote. The challenges of the times present in many forms, but we are S-I-C-S, we keep trying. The class of 2023, our mission is evident through your leadership and in academics and athletics. In the Academic Decathlon State Championship, Arianne Baker placed number one in interview. <laughs> Isabella Rodriguez placed number one in speech. And at the national level, Sanaya Rivera, Rivera placed bronze in math. We are SICS, we keep trying. Our boys basketball team learned the value of hard work as the runner up for the state championships. We R-S-I-C-S, we keep trying. Jada Polk and the girls basketball team learned the sweet success of victory. As the first team in our school's history to win the state championships. We are S-I-C-S, we keep trying. Winston Lewis demonstrated superb ability as the 200-meter track and field state champion. We are SICS. We keep trying. As a class, you kept trying, and as a result, you have a 99% college acceptance rate. We are SICS. As a class, you kept trying, and as a result, you have approximately $14 million in scholarships and awards. We are SICS. We keep trying. We are well acquainted with the words that describe life failure and success, trials and triumphs, discouragement and encouragement, starting new, starting now, and starting over. We are SICS, we keep trying. Like the bird building her home on your windowsill has had every single nest destroyed before. The spider that is delicately weaving a silken masterpiece has had every single thread broken before. And despite it all, they try again. To our graduates who are enlisted into the military, entering the workforce, enrolled in college, are still trying to figure it out, 
you have a strong foundation to build a brilliant life. Through discipline and determination, remember, we are S-I-C-S. We keep trying, we keep growing, we keep learning, we keep discovering, we keep achieving, we keep becoming. We are S-I-C-S. We keep trying. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Thank you, Dr. White. Very inspirational. I'd like to invite Mayor Dominic Sarno up as our next honored guest. I was telling the pastor there, I, I thought he was going to pass the basket there. First of all, to uh, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, to Pastor Atu White, the Board of Trustees, to Director Baker, to the Representative uh, Orlando Ramos, to the honored guest on stage, and to the class of 2023. How does it feel? To the parents and family members of the class of 2023, how does it feel? I could make book on that every time that the parents and family members are always louder. I want to give a special shout out to uh, Brendan Dwyer uh, for uh, a good health and speedy recovery and to Tommy Campana. Uh, Campania, uh, who has been like the Renaissance man for many, many years of Springfield International Charter School. You guys uh, feel good and uh, we wish you were here. Also, special shout out to the Girls State Basketball Championship team. I had the wonderful opportunity to bring them down to City Hall to celebrate uh, that championship. And they were just wonderful young ladies. And it was just warmed my heart because many of the parents and grandparents I knew. And I have to tell you, in the short period of time, your school has built such a solid foundation, not only in academics, athletics, and community service. Now, being able to do that, you had two different families First, you had your family, where your foundation was laid at home, and your mom and dad and family members were there to put a roof over your head, food on the table, clothes on the back, and maybe every once in a while, a little bit of tough love, because they knew, they know that you can and will succeed. Now's the appropriate time to thank your family members. Thank you for your continued belief and investment in our city of Springfield. Now you have a second family, and they're sitting over there. That's the administration and teachers and staff of Springfield National Charter School. And I know they might have got on your case every once in a while, but they did that because they care about you and they know that you can and will succeed. Now's the appropriate time to give them a nice round of applause. So, you know, it frosts me at times with the media. Uh, negativity always sells, and, and many a times we don't hear about the good things that our young people do. And there are some in this city, some in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, some in the United States of America that indicate a zip code, a zip code is going to dictate your future. You continue to prove them wrong, and you dictate your future. Tonight, you stand as a shining example of the beautiful mosaic of the city of Springfield, and the shining stars of talent that the city of Springfield has to offer. And with some of you moving on to college, 
some of you moving on to the workforce, some of you moving on to military service, and Godspeed to you. And by the way, to the veterans that can stand or raise your hands, please, let's give you a round of applause. It is because of your efforts that America is still the greatest country in the world, the beacon of democracy, strength, opportunity, and hope. Thank you, veterans. So, believe it or not, some of you are going to go on to lead right here in the city of Springfield. Some of you will go on to lead in the state. Some of you will go on to lead in America. And believe it or not, some of you will go on to lead in the world. Some might be in front of the camera, in the public eye, and others will be behind the scenes, making for a better community. I tell you this, and it goes, includes me too, not every day is a good day, but there's always another day. And because of your strength, your fortitude, and your belief in oneself, you can deal with any type of adversity that comes your way because you've been properly prepared. So as you move forward, I ask of you to always be proud not only of yourself, be proud of your family, be proud of Springfield International Charter School, be proud of our city of Springfield. And if you have the opportunity, as many of the student speakers spoke of today, they spoke of family members or teachers that took the time to put their arm around their shoulder to help them out. If you have the opportunity to do that, play it forward. That's extremely important. Now, the last thing I'm going to say, and I want to make sure I get it right, so I have to, I was kidding around, Cindy Miller, I have to pull out my cheaters. Now, I'll also be playing the trombone. But there's a quote that I love from Booker T. Washington, and he's a renowned educator and, and, and writer. Now, in this age of social media, and you kids are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, tic-tac-toe, you're, 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 so, but, but I want, just heed this advice, okay? Booker T. Washington said this, associate yourself with people of good quality, for it's better to be alone than to be in bad company. Congratulations to the class of 2023. I wish you continued success and good health, and go get them. Thanks as always, Mayor Sarno, for your support. I'd like to invite State Representative Orlando Ramos up as our final honored guest. Good evening. I feel like I'm speaking to an empty room. Good evening. Good evening, class of 2023. Parents, family, friends, faculty, staff, and administrators, it is truly a, a pleasure to be here with you on this special day. I'm gonna speak to the students in a minute, but first, I just found out earlier that uh, the, the valid valedictorian of the class averaged a 4.3. Which is, which is amazing. Congratulations to that person. I, I, a lot of people don't know this about me. A lot of people don't know this about me because uh, I don't like to brag, but when I was in high school, I also averaged a 4.3. Not, not my GPA, that was my average on the basketball team. 4.3 points per game. Um, I was close to making it to the NBA, though. I was about that close if I had grown another foot. But first, I want to thank the parents, recognize the parents, the fathers and mothers who have invested time and effort over the past 18 years to help you get to this point. You deserve to be acknowledged. Fathers, 
mothers, parents, will you please stand and be recognized? Let's get one thing straight. Students, you get the diploma, but your parents are taking the credit. Congratulations to all of you. You did it. Your child made it. And I know firsthand that this is absolutely the best feeling in the world. A huge congratulations, of course, to the graduates for accomplishing this despite the many challenges associated with the COVID-19 pandemic. Believe me when I tell you that I can relate. I ran for this position during the pandemic. And my first term was much different than anything else the Massachusetts legislature has ever seen. But I refused to look at it adversely. Instead, I accept it as a sign of resiliency, as should you. You have graduated in the face of adversity, and you should be extremely proud of yourselves. Give yourselves a round of applause. Just last year, I had the privilege of speaking to the class of 2022, and I spoke to them about seven specific words. Forward, failure, forgiveness, friends, family, freedom, and fun. But those words share in common are two things. One, the obvious, they all start with the letter F. And two, most importantly, I truly believe that the valuable lessons learned in each word will help you shape the rest of your lives for years to come. Now, I don't want to repeat all of them because you're all anxious to get your diploma in your hands, and I promise I would keep my remarks short. But I do want to focus on one of those words, which is failure. Do not fear failure. Failure is a part of life. Failure does not equate demise. Failure can be an excellent teacher. It was for me. First time I ran for public office, it was in 2009. I worked really hard on that campaign. I put in a lot of hard work and effort. I poured my heart and soul into the campaign and I lost by 80 votes. Two years later, I ran again. Same position, same opponent. I said, if I could just do the same thing over again, but just a little bit harder, I could win this time. But I lost again, this time by 40 votes. And I gave up. I said, that's it. I'm not, never running for public office again. And it was actually my daughter, Ariana, who graduated from last year's class, who changed my mind by guilting me into running again and using my own words against me. She said, you're always telling me not to give up. So I decided to run again, and this time I ran harder, but I also ran smarter. I learned from my mistakes, and I implemented them, I used them. And this time I won by 430 votes, a two to one margin. It's been said and it's been written before that the only true failure in life is when you stop trying. In fact, I can pretty much guarantee you that the most successful people that you'll ever meet in your lives are people who failed over and over and over. But they never gave up until they found success. And I have no doubt that because of the first class education that you received right here as SICS, each and every one of you will be successful in your endeavors, and you will make the city of Springfield proud. With that said, I leave you with the words once spoken by a man much wiser than I. Sometimes you will never know the true value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Take a look around you. Make sure you thank and embrace your friends and those who are here for you your family, your friends who care deeply about you and make this a truly special and memorable memory. 
I want to congratulate you once again. And before I forget, I do have to mention one person in particular because my chief of staff's daughter is graduating tonight as well. Sarah, congratulations. Your mom loves you so much, she wanted me to embarrass you and call out your name. But uh, again, I just want to congratulate all of you on behalf of the Massachusetts General Court. Thank you for making the city of Springfield proud. Congratulations. Thank you, Representative Ramos. And now, another musical selection from our talented SICS vocalists and musicians.
like I'm slipped, stay here you whisper through the phone. Wait for me to come home. Absolutely phenomenal. You may rejoin your classmates. Nice job. The amount of talent in this room is fairly obvious at this point. Class of 2023, please rise. <clears throat> by the power vested in me, by the Springfield International Charter School Board of Trustees, I am confirming and certifying that the students before me have met the graduation requirements of the Department of Secondary Education from the Springfield International Charter School as the class of 2023. Graduates, please move your tassel from right to left. Congratulations. Good evening, SICS family. I am honored to announce the 2023 graduates, starting with our National Honor Society students. First off, Gabrielle Bollier. <laughs> Lanaya Green. <laughs> Yasmilka Hidalgo. Veronica Kazor. Amory Krautler. Austin Lee.
Faith Manley. Isabella Rodriguez. Amaya Rodriguez Rosado. Kendra Scott. Raina Ture. Kiara Valentin. Nicole Zancan. Danny Abreu. Misael Alvarado. Hector Aponte. Brandy Saul Arias Perez. Shadell Armstrong. Arianne Baker. Christopher Baptiste. Logan Barona. Rebecca Carlisle Boucher. Joshua Cologne. Gabriel Cotto. Tyshawn Craig. Sarah Crawford Marino. William Cruz. McKenna Daly. Jaden Del Rio. Kristen Diodati. Ian Diodati. Haley Dollar. Lillian Dow. Aaliyah Flowers. Omar Frazier. Eliana Garcia. Jay Sean Gaiman.
Kijor Gladden. Jalissa Gonzalez. Zariah Green. Christopher Grimaldi. Reese Hill. Ricardo Hilton. Ladarius Kyles Williams. Ariana LaBoy. Naomi Lewis. Winston Lewis. <laughs> Jemiah Lucian. <laughs> Antonio Marcano. Savannah Markham. <laughs> Damian McCarthy. <laughs> Gabriel Melville. <laughs> Vida Miribal. Jalise Morales. Jeremy Dongo. Kavion Nixon. Anaya Ortiz. Andrew Phillips. Jada Polk. William Reyes. Amiley Rivera. Sierra Rivera. Kayla Rivera. Sanaya Rivera. Kenneth Rogers. Kalani Ruiz. Jaden Sanchez. Yale Santiago.
Robert Scoville. Jalicia Senor. Ryan Steele. Jasmine Taylor Brown. Angelise Thomas. Eric Thomas. Talia Thomas. Kristen Torado. Michael Tran. William Tu. Tristan Tucker. Kyle Tyrell. Jaylene Vargas. Makita White. Devin Wondolowski. And last but not least, Evan Yeomans. Thank you, class of 2023. Thank you to all in attendance, and certainly good luck to our graduates for the future. Please remain seating or standing while our graduates proceed with their recessional. Thank you.